Hey runners, this is Steve. Steve entered a marathon wanting to run sub three hours, but he ended up with a 306. I'm gonna show you exactly where Steve went wrong and how I'm using his pace, power, heart rate data to give me a bird's eye view of his entire race so that you can avoid all the common mistakes that Steve made. I'll also show you why most coaches are missing out on valuable information by being stuck at level one analysis. Using the same four step process I outlined in my how to predict your goal marathon time video, I gave Steve some clear guidelines, which make it a lot easier for me to look back on after the race to see where Steve went wrong. Steve's main goals or speed limits as I like to call them were 370 watts and a 163 BPM heart rate. And that's mainly for the first hour. See, the start of this marathon is quite undulating. So I decided not to give Steve any pace targets. Steve and I had worked a lot with running power in the build up to this race and his key workouts. So I was confident in the numbers I was giving him. Let's find out where Steve went wrong, starting with a level one analysis. For the start of the dive, I'm gonna use my go-to app for analyzing and planning training, that's Training Peaks. You can follow along with your own data if you want, because there's a free 14 day trial and I'll just link to that in the description. So without doing any kind of in-depth analysis at all, I can just eyeball this data and tell where Steve went wrong. You can see he's got an increasing heart rate across the race and then a decreasing pace and power over the back end. So that's told me already, Steve's blowing up. So let's take a closer look with a basic level one analysis. So we're just gonna compare Steve's first and second halves. So we can see he's done a 129 over the first half marathon and then a 137 over the second half. So that's a massive slowing down of around a 412 average pace to a 436, around 8% decline. These two simple data points show that Steve, yes, definitely blew up and most probably started too fast for his abilities because he ended up having to slow down. But if we take a closer look at the data, it starts to paint a more complicated picture. Now we're gonna move on to a level two analysis. This is what a lot of coaches will tell you is a data deep dive, but I'll show you why a level three analysis is really required to find out exactly what went wrong in Steve's race. If we have a look at the first half, we can see that Steve's average heart rate was 160 beats a minute. For Steve, that equates to about 92% of his lactate threshold. Remember, I told Steve he needed to stay under 163, which he's done, and he's well within his zone three range, 88 to 95% of his threshold. So everything looks good there. Then we have a look at his average pace, 412 minutes per K. That's 95% of Steve's lactate threshold. And is what I would consider the very, very top of your marathon or goal marathon pace, especially over the first hour. But it's not outrageous for Steve or someone going for a sub three hour marathon time. So it doesn't really explain a 8% reduction in Steve's pace over the second half. Luckily, Steve was wearing his stride running power meter. We see though that Steve's average power was 366 watts. Remember, I told him to stay under 370. He's done that. 366 watts equates to 92% of his threshold. Again, that sits well within his 88 to 95% goal zone three marathon pace range. So he's done everything I told him to. He stayed under 163 heart rate and he stayed under 370 watts. He's even hit the pace he's required for a sub three. So what's caused Steve to slow down so drastically over the second half? Was it his nutrition? Was it the weather conditions? Let's jump into level three analysis to really find out what happened. What I want to have a look at is Steve's peak outputs. So first up, we have a look at his peak one kilometer pace output, which is four minute Ks. This is fast, but this isn't outrageous. Although his fastest K came in the first 10 minutes of the race, which is not ideal, Again, it's at 98% of his threshold, which is above what I'd recommend, but for four minutes early on, it's not too outrageous. And I can see that it's on a negative 0.5% gradient. So he's going slightly downhill. He hasn't maintained that pace. And I can also double check on his power. So it's actually not too bad just looking at that peak 1K pace. The next peak number I'm looking at is Steve's five minute peak heart rate which was 165 beats a minute, came in around the one hour mark into the race. 165 is clearly above the 163 limit, I told him, 
and equates to around 98% of his lactate threshold. Although I can see it was on the uphill section and immediately after that on the descent, his heart rate dropped to 157. So yes, it's high, but again, nothing outrageous that would indicate a massive slowing down. This is where running power can be so valuable. So I can see that Steve's first 20 minutes of the race, he averaged 380 watts. Remember, I told him to stay under 370. I can also see that he did two minutes of cumulative time above 100% of his threshold, and he's done six minutes at 98% of his threshold. So these numbers paint a very different picture of how Steve ran that first half of his race. While his heart rate and his pace all looked pretty good, even the peaks didn't scream out, I went out too hard. It wasn't until we have a look at the peak power outputs that we can see Steve is running near his threshold for around 20 minutes at the start of the race, including two minutes of 5k efforts in terms of power output. If you have a basic knowledge of GPS, you probably understand why his pace numbers were a little misleading over the first half. I said it was undulating, so on the uphills he's going to be running slower, which is going to put him more in line with what we'd expect. But his power numbers are going to show how much effort he's truly putting out on those uphills. But what about heart rate? Why was that so misleading? See, Steve's an experienced endurance runner. He's run multiple marathons and ultra marathons. So when he's putting out these high intensity efforts within the early stages of a multiple hour event, he can easily absorb those due to his huge aerobic capacity and his great biomechanical conditioning. He's able to buffer any byproducts of lactic acid and supply the required oxygen that his muscles need. So we don't really see the impact of these efforts. That's why I spoke about in my heart rate pace power which metric to choose video that you always need a hierarchy of metrics to get a full picture to ensure you're always training and racing optimally. So I mean, what can we learn from this? When Dr. Will says stay under 370 watts, you stay under 370 watts. But actually, when I spoke to Steve after the race, he said whenever he looked at his watch, he was under 370 watts. And that's why I recommend having real-time and average metrics for every, say, 20 minutes to 5Ks within your race, because it starts to give you a better picture about what's happening in the real-time moment and also what's happened over, on average, a special section. And that's why when undulating races, it can be really helpful when your heart rate and your pace are fluctuating and you're not using power, you can see how did that section actually average out. So what can you do? Well, the first thing is you can look back at some of your old data and see if any of your peak heart rate pace power numbers were above 95% of your threshold. Remember, you can use my threshold calculator on my website. I'll link to that. Then you can have a look to see if any of those peaks which are above 95% of your threshold, if you have any, came in the first or the second half of the race. If it was in the first half, you almost definitely started too hard or at least exerted yourself too far on particular parts of the course early in the race. The other thing you can do is obviously hit subscribe, watch some of my other content to get up to speed if some of the stuff was a little confusing, or hit me up in the comments section and I'll be sure to reply. All right, see you on the next one. Hashtag faster with data.